movies and Halloween have made ghosts and demons popular and sometimes glorified, but there are many real life places that have demonic presences and ghost sightings that are terrifying. Some of these haunted places can be found in Arkansas and should be avoided at all costs. These are the top 5 haunted places in Arkansas you should never visit. In at number 5 we have the King Opera House. The King Opera House in Van Buren was built in the late 19th century but didn't get famous from the shows it hosted or its beautiful interior, but instead the Opera House is noted for its connection to a murder, and there are rumours that it is haunted by the murdered actor. It all began with actor Charles Tolson, who was the owner of the Tolson Stock Company, which was a travelling acting troupe. The troupe had just finished a week of performances at the King Opera House in September 1903, and they were headed out of town to go to another performance. They headed to the train station and when Tolson made his way to the ticket window, someone called out his name. Dr William Parman, a well known local doctor emerged and shot Tolson with his revolver. Tolson was shot in the hip and the chest and he was taken to the Fort Smith Hospital, but it was too late and he died from his injuries. Dr Parchman's motive for the incident was that he believed his 17 year old daughter was in love with Tolson, was planning on running away with him even though Tolson was married and his wife was a member of the acting troupe. Tolson knew Dr Parchman and his daughter Ali, but there was no proof that he had any intention of eloping with the girl. Parchman was acting based on the information given to him by a vinegar salesman who may have had an interest in the young girl. Parchman was found not guilty of the murder despite there being multiple witnesses. Interestingly, both Ali and the vinegar salesman left town and were not present for the trial. It's said that Tolson's ghost haunts the King Opera House, which was the location of his last performance. Today, the Opera House is a contributing property to the Van Buren Historic District, listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Places. It isn't currently open to the public, but is available to be rented out. In at number 4 we have Toltec Mounds. The Toltec Mounds is a famous historical site in Arkansas and is a national historic landmark, one of four in the Arkansas State Park system, and this park is the largest and most complex mound site in the state. Arkansas was once the home of a group of people referred to as the Plum Bayou Culture by archaeologists and historians. Their existence in the area is a bit of a mystery. These people were not related to the Toltec tribes from Mexico, despite the site's name. Name. The Plum Bayou culture also cannot be traced to any other group of people living in the area when the tribe was active. A total of 18 mounds have been identified in the area, all built between 650 and 1050 AD. One mound stands 49 feet high and another at 39 feet with many smaller mounds surrounding it. The site was abandoned around 1050 AD and no remnants of the residents exist outside of the Toltec mounds. Today the site is still an active archaeological site in the home of Toltec Mounds Archaeological State Park. As for hauntings at the site, if an entire culture disappearing without trace isn't creepy enough, many visitors to the site have reported the appearance of lights or orbs near the mounds, seeing ghosts and hearing footsteps around the site at night. Many of these findings have been caught on camera and video and so many paranormal investigators, ghost hunters and haunting enthusiasts have confirmed there is activity in the area. Whether it's from the lost society or not, we may never know. The mounds are open daily for visitors with tours available to learn more about the history and hauntings in the area. In at number 3 we have the Allen House. The Allen House was built back in 1905 and was named after the original owner, Joe Lee Allen, where he lived in the home with his family for many years. Although Joe died in 1917, his wife Caddy stayed in the home with the three children Laddle, Lonnie, Lee and Lewis. Sadly, Laddle took his own life in one of the bedrooms by drinking potassium cyanide and it was unknown for many years for why she did it. After her death, her mother Caddy Allen kept the room completely closed off from the rest of the house. When Caddy passed in 1954, the property was split into rental apartments and soon after renters moved moved in, they reported hearing footsteps and moans from the bedroom where Laddle died. In 1985, new owners bought the house and opened the bedroom and it still contained the bottle of cyanide in a closet. The house changed owners twice and in 2007 Mark and Rebecca Spencer purchased the Allen house and had a complete paranormal investigation done in 2008 because of the endless unexplainable instances. The investigators recorded over 40 voice phenomena and had their own paranormal experiences throughout their investigation. On August 22nd, 2009, Laddle's love letters were discovered in the attic floor. Over 90 letters detail her 1948 love affair, which ended with her taking her own life on Christmas night. After the owner Mark had experienced endless amounts of paranormal activity and discovering Laddle's love letters, he wrote a book called A Haunted Love Story. Nowadays, the home can be booked for tours explaining the history and the paranormal activity that goes on in the Allen House. During the Halloween season, it's open to the public from 6 to 11 pm for tours and paranormal investigators, and ghost lovers flock to hopefully experience Laddle's ghost that haunts the house to this day. In at number 2 we have Clayton House. The Clayton House is a historical treasure but it's also one of the most haunted places in Arkansas. The home was originally built in 1852 by a man known as Mr Sutton and several years later William Henry Harrison Clayton purchased
purchased the house and renovated it, doubling it in size, transforming the style into Victorian Gothic Italianate. Mr. Clayton lived here from 1882 to 1897 with his wife along with their seven children. The home still has old portraits of William and his wife Florence hanging on the wall and still had numerous priceless family belongings in the home. William had a twin brother, John K. Clayton, who was a US senator who had been mysteriously assassinated in 1873, and many believe his ghost is one that haunts the Clayton house. The second floor bedroom seems to have the most activity, and staff and visitors have reported hearing footsteps, boots stomping and doors slamming, along with seeing apparitions. Music and singing have also been heard throughout the house. People who have visited this home have described seeing one ghostly apparition known as the Tall Man, who is dressed in all black, wears a hat and walks angrily around. Another spirit often seen around the Clayton property is described as the woman in the brown dress. The woman is said to be peaceful and often just stands in one spot quite still. She is believed to be either Mrs. Clayton or possibly a nurse from the time the property was a hospital. The home became abandoned during the Civil War before it transformed into a Union Army hospital. There was a carpenter in 2007 who was doing some repairs on the home and took pictures before it started working and when the pictures were developed, there was what appeared to be a woman in one of them. The home is now listed on the National Registry of Historic Places and holds tours of the home explaining the history and ghost stories. And finally and at number one we have Crescent Hotel. The Crescent Hotel was built in 1886 and can be found in Eureka Springs. Due to the rich history, it has hundreds of tales of paranormal experiences and ghost sightings. The hotel has previously served as both a private girls college and a cancer hospital where Dr. Norman Baker claimed to have the cure for cancer. There are so many stories of ghost sightings, starting in room 218 where Michael, an Irish stonemason, who fell to his death when building the hotel. He's known to hang out in this room and is often seen. Theodora, a cancer patient who is known to be seen fumbling for her keys outside room 419 as well as tidying up for guests when they leave the room. Brecky, who passed away in the hotel, has been seen throughout the hotel, often bouncing a ball. Dr. John Fremont Ellis, the hotel's former in-house doctor in the 19th century, is often seen or his cherry pipe tobacco is smelled near his former office, which is now room 212. Even the famed hotel cat Morris, who had been buried on the hotel property, is regularly seen and heard. A reoccurring phenomenon happens at a specific spot on the third floor, where the hotel connects to an annex built onto the hotel when it was a hospital. The area has been said to be a portal to the other side. There have been multiple guests who have grown faint, with a few passing out frequently. Guests turning pale and falling against the wall and then sliding down, many paranormal investigators believe that limestone has a special ability to absorb and release electromagnetic and psychic energies. Crescent Mount in the hilltop the hotel sits on is predominantly limestone. The massive thick stones used for the body of the hotel were also made of limestone, and these factors may contribute to the amount of paranormal activity the hotel guests experience. The Crescent Hotel is dubbed America's most haunted hotel and has been on many TV shows like Ghost Hunters, Ghost Adventures, and Paranormal Witness. There have been an abundance of extraordinary experiences and have attracted the attention of paranormal investigators to study and research the hotel's supernatural activity. The hotel offers daily ghost tours to learn more about the ghost stories, sightings, and the history of the hotel. Well, there we have it. I'll see you in the next video.